What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I have a few stories to talk about today, and we're going to take a look and a listen to Senator Manchin. Uh, he's going to be talking about the this voting rights bill. Okay, so we've been we've been following this for the last couple of days, and it looks like it's not going to go anywhere, even though today they will be having a vote. Uh, so we're going to look at the top news stories, and then we're going to take a look and a listen to Senator Manchin. But first off on this channel, we talk about financial news and what's going on in Washington, D.C. If that sounds like something interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification. That way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. And like always, if you see my name and a picture of me in the comment section, make sure you see a check mark next to my name. That check mark signifies that it's me. If you do not see that check mark, it's not me. It's someone trying to impersonate me. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right over to the uh, top stories here. And we have a few good stories uh, to share. So I, I do want to say that. Uh, but the, the first story here is Biden plans a giveaway of 400 million masks as Omicron surges. Okay, so they're talking about giving away uh, the N95 mask, okay? Because what a lot of people are wearing are the cloth masks. So they're going to have, if you go to a pharmacy or if you go to a certain uh, healthcare facilities, you'll be able to get these ND uh, or N95 masks. So I generally, when I go out, uh, if I'm going into a large crowd, I will uh, use the N95 mask. Uh, so this is good. This is good news that they'll be offering these for free. So all you need to do is go to your local pharmacy and you'll be able to get them. I don't know how many you'll be able to get at a time, uh, but uh, you will be able to get those. So that's really, really good news for a lot of people. And I highly encourage you to uh, get an N95 mask. If if you're wearing a mask at all, wear that. You might as well. If you if you if you go into a place where you need to wear a mask, wear something that will provide you a little bit more protection than the cloth mask that that uh, that you see a lot of people wearing. And I used to wear it all, wear them all the time, uh, but now with Omicron, because it is so contagious, it's it's a good idea to wear the N95, especially if they're they're providing them for free. Uh, next story here. Uh, questions facing Biden as his second solo White House presser. So this is only his second press conference. Okay, so he's going to have a press conference later today. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, he might have already had the press conference. Uh, but I will be bringing that information to you as well. So I might do another video today, later today, uh, depending on what he says in this uh, press conference. But when it comes to President Biden, they're 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 doing a reset and. Uh, the White House has already indicated that they will be going a different going a different way when it comes to uh, promoting and trying to get the information to the American people. Uh, before the president was really negotiating with Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema behind closed doors, now the president is going to put out his his plan to the American people. So he's going to let the American people know what he wants. And in that way, the American people, they're more informed and they might reach out to Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema and say, hey, why aren't you? Uh, for for the voting rights bill, why aren't you for Build Back Better? Why aren't you for the child tax credit? All that kind of stuff. That's that's what the president wants to do right now. So that that will be a push. You're going to hear more and more of this. Uh, the president letting us know what's because that was one of my my complaints. Build Back Better. What is it? What's in it? We don't really know. We hear Build Back Better, and that's all we really know about. We know that there was a child tax credit. If you've been following my channel, you know the child tax credit's in it. But there are a lot of other things that are in Build Back Better that we don't know about. So I think this is the right move for the president. This reset is good, and he needs to get that information out to the American people so they know exactly what they're they're missing out on. Uh, so I, I think that's a that's a good move. Okay, so let's go to the next story here. Uh, website to order free COVID-19 testing is up and running. Now I did this. Okay. I, I went ahead and ordered mine yesterday. It, they had a kind of a soft opening, I guess you can say, uh, it was open yesterday and you could get online and put in your information and you were able to get, uh, these, these, uh, free COVID tests. So they're at home tests and I believe you receive four, it's four per household. So because I live alone, I will get four. And now they're not PCR tests, okay? So if you're traveling, I'll be traveling in a month, I I still need to go and get another test, okay? I need to get the PCR test, I can't. Uh, actually, I take that back. I've been fully vaccinated, so I don't need the PCR test in order to go to Columbia, but on the way back, uh, depending on what, things change day by day, but on the way back to the US, I will need to get a PCR test as things stand right now uh, in order to get back into the US. 
But uh, this is good news. Now, it's good that they're providing these tests, but is it too late? And I, I think with, with the testing and the mask, they're, they're giving out these, 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 uh, these free masks and the free testing, but uh, some are going to argue, you know what, you should have done that months ago, and now it's too late. Uh, we're already at the peak of, of Omicron, and hopefully we're on the, the downtick. But uh, as of right now, uh, you're going to hear that come out. People are going to say, well, it's too late. But nonetheless, it's free. I would, I, would, I would highly recommend going on the website. It takes not even 30 seconds to fill out the information. All you're doing is filling out your name, your address, and then you just hit submit, and, they, and then we'll go ahead and, and send it out to you. And I believe it's 7 to 12 business days or something like that. So it'll take a little bit of time to get to you. Now, the next story here, uh, Blinken says Russian attack on Ukraine could come at very short notice. So we're looking at a situation right now where we might get pulled into another war. Okay, so... Uh, Russia and Ukraine, they're, they're having some, some conflict, and the thought is that Russia might invade Ukraine. And they're already in some areas, some territories of, of Ukraine, and they have pretty much surrounded the country of Ukraine. So this could be a situation where we're going to look at some type of um, conflict, and the U.S. currently on the side of Ukraine might try to assist by providing uh, military equipment uh, and the like. So we, we could see a situation where we get pulled into another another conflict, which is, is not good for us, especially during this situation here. Where we have all the things that we're, we're uh, battling right now. We might be in a situation where we get pulled into this U Ukraine situation. So we're going to have to follow this and see where it goes. Okay, next story I want to talk about here is uh, Manchin defends filibuster stance amid primary threats so I'm going to go ahead right now and show you the clip where uh, Senator Manchin was talking about bring it on. Here we go. Okay. Senator, we're going to talk about it on the I'm a little informal today. Yeah, okay? that's all good. I've got to go to, you know, we have a thing that's going to take You want me to stand here? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> now, I just like that, right? He's like, hey, you're not going to go to the thing here. You, you, you want me to stand here? Where, where do you want me to stand so I can get the best lighting and so you guys can get the, the best pictures and video of me? The Democrats are talking about using the nuclear option to create a talking filibuster. Would you, are you open to that idea? Oh, I love a talking filibuster. I think we should be. I think basically there should be transparency in how we, how we do our business here, or our lack of doing business. Okay, now this is good. This is good what he's saying here as far as the talking filibuster. I've always said that they need to have the talking filibuster. Um, the only problem with the talking filibuster is you still need the 60 votes. So at the end of the day, they can keep talking. And basically what, what a talking filibuster would be is you would have to have the senators come on the Senate floor and talk and talk and talk uh, until they're tired. And then once they're tired, then they'll, they'll go ahead and move uh, for a vote. Now, the good news when they're moving for a vote, even if they don't get the 60 votes, they'll be on record. We're either voting against uh, the, the voting rights bill or voting for the bill of voting rights bill. So that's good. They'll at least be on record. At the at the present time, they don't even get to a vote on the bill. They're only doing the, the procedural vote. The procedural vote to avoid the filibuster. That's all that we're seeing now. We don't see that second half. We don't see them actually vote on the bill. And so in a situation like this, if they have to do a talking filibuster, the whole time that they're doing this talking filibuster, you're going to have and you should have politicians coming out and saying, look, they're wasting the American people's time. Uh, we're, we're talking about a serious, serious subject here. And you just have these politicians grandstanding, talking, reading out of phone books and reading child, uh, children's stories and all this stuff. So it is, it's real bad optics for the politicians to do a, a talking filibuster, and that's why they got away from it. But if they do bring it back, I think it will, um, it will make some politicians look really bad, basically, because they're going to be out there just trying to stall for time, and it will be obvious. You're saying at the end of it, it would be a 51 There's never That's never happened. That's never happened in the history of our country. You know, basically, there's never been a simple majority vote. To, just, to, to basically get off of, uh, of, of a debate. And so he's saying still, they're, they're, they still need the 60 votes to get off the debate. So they're still going to have to have, you're still going to have to have 10 Republicans come on board. So it's not going to be one of those situations where you just do the filibuster, do the filibuster, and then only you get the 50 votes, um, the, the, major, the simple majority vote. You still need the 60 votes. Chris McClavering was questioning why you would filibuster your own bill that you worked, you worked on. 
by not doing a carve out for voting rights? I, I just, the only thing I've been very clear about that, I, I just don't know how you break a rule to make a rule and thinking you're doing something is going to. We've never done this. We have never done. I've looked, I've been looking for every precedent I can, every carve out. The bottom line is everything that we've done, I've been, they've told me about, uh, well, the, the, uh, the debt ceiling. That was done by the rules. That was done by the rules, okay? And that was uh, uh, done with uh, Majority Leader Schumer and, and Minority Leader uh, McConnell coming to an agreement. That's what it's all about. So we've done Okay, and he's right about that. The, the, the debt ceiling, the, they avoided the filibuster, but Republicans came on board. They had the 60 votes that they needed. I know this is getting a little confusing, but in order to make a change to the rules, you need 60 votes. And so in the when it, come, when it came to the debt ceiling, Republicans, they opened up the door by saying, okay, we'll vote to change the rules for the, for the debt ceiling. So we'll give you those 60 votes that you need, but then you're going to have to raise a debt ceiling on your own. So in order to change the rules, you needed Republicans. You needed 10 Republicans to support it. And then in order to raise the debt ceiling, because they changed the rules, you needed 50 Democrats. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing and I, I, I'm telling you, when it comes to government and, and, and Congress and legislation, it is just convoluted. It's, it's, it's confusing. And I don't know. I, I think it's that way on purpose. So the American people are, don't know what's going on. Everything along the lines of with the rules. And I don't know why we can't come together and find a pathway forward. But breaking the rules, there's no checks and balances in this process. Only for the only thing we have is a filibuster. And they think if you have a situation we have right now, where you have the executive branch of government and you have Congress, the House and the Senate, they're all the same, and there's no check and balance because basically you just sweep right through and the same thing could happen if Republicans had everything. And I just, the only thing I've ever said was this. Um, the majority of my, of my colleagues in the caucus, Democrat caucus, they've changed. They've changed their mind. I respect that. You have a right to change your mind. I haven't. I hope they respect that, too. I've never changed my mind on, on the filibuster. Do you, do you think it's smart for your leadership to hold this vote? Given I, I'm not going to question. I'm, I'm going to find out what the, th what the thought process is. I really, Burgess, I really don't know what, what their thoughts may be, but we'll find out pretty quickly when I go upstairs. But Does it make it harder for you to work with them? Going nothing. You know, I work with everybody. I, I understand. I've been around this a long time. I don't take anything personal, just my family. And uh, basically, I try to, I respect everybody and I work with everybody. You feel know, like, you, know, like you, you said, you said uh, multiple times that vote changes to voting laws need to be bipartisan, correct? Uh, so, how, why has it been so difficult for you to get uh, non actual we're, we're not. Let me tell you what we're doing now. We have a group of, of senators, bipartisan senators. The thing that caused the insurrection was what? The electronic, uh, the electoral uh, vote count. We can fix that to stop that from ever happening again when people think they can steal the election after the elections, uh, after the votes have been cast. That has to be fixed. Protecting people that work on the polls, they should be protected by a criminal offense, you know, a cr a federal crime, if someone tries to intimidate or harass or harm anybody. There's so many things that we can agree on. And we all agree, everyone, the Constitution gives everyone a right to vote 18 years of age, and we have to protect that right. It's not that, I, I just, you know, and, uh, we just got to find a way that we can make this work to where everyone understands that we're going to protect their right to vote and them have access to the polls. Senator, do you believe your party has... Do him, right uh, what do you say to your Democratic colleagues who aren't ruling out you supporting a possible primary challenge? Uh, I've been primary my entire life. That would not be anything new for me. I've never run an election. I wasn't primary. It's West Virginia. It's this rough and tumble. <laughs> we're used to that. So bring it on. Okay, so that's the bring it on. Now, just so you guys understand when it comes to a primary or being primaried, if you, if you don't know what that means, basically have another Democrat run against him in the primary. Uh, so that's what that's what he's talking about. He says he's been primaried every time he's he's run. So he's always had some opposition. So he's always had a Democrat run against him in the primary. And then once the primary is done, if he wins the primary, then you go into the general. And when you go into the general, that's when you're running against uh, someone from the Republican Party, and then you'll also have the Green Party and all the, the other parties uh, that are participating. So that that's what he's talking about there. But he's saying, bring it on. It's It happens every time. Senator, do you believe your party, do you believe your party has the right priorities at this point? They're focusing on changing the filibuster rules, trying to pass this big electoral bill, 
There are a lot of concerns about inflation. There are a lot of concerns about COVID that you've expressed. Your party leaders of the White House have it right right now. Well, let me just say this. I know what the West Virginia people believe and my colleagues. I know what I hear from my friends around the country. They're concerned about inflation. It's real. This is not something made up. It's real. It's hurting them. And basically COVID, it's extremely hard on everybody. And getting people back to work has been extremely hard. Uh, businesses opening back up has been extremely hard. Uh, these are things we should be working on. This is things we should be coming together, cohesing around basically. How do we fix the challenges we have in America? Uh, we don't need to make up any new ones. We have enough already there for us. So I would think get your priorities in order. That's all. We all should. Senator One more. What did you make of uh, the letter from Jerry West and uh, your old friend Nick Saban? Well, Nick Saban's letter was straight. They're all straight on. They all want the right to vote, right? Mm -hmm. We all want that. And Nick Saban at the bottom of his letter, which they didn't put, Paul Tagliabue did not put what Nick Saban wrote at the bottom, his footnote. Yeah. He supports the filibuster. Don't, do not get rid of the filibuster. Right. Now, why did he automatically leave that out? No, I, I, I was yeah. I, well, so basically, coaches uh, in West Virginia wrote a letter to Senator Manchin saying that they support the voting rights bill, which Senator Manchin also supports the voting rights bill. I'm going to talk a little bit about that right after this clip. Well, no, 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 yeah, no, no. I think everyone, we should all support the right to vote, everyone, but not breaking, not, not breaking the rules to make new rules. Senator Manchin, what would you say to voters of color who say that your uh, inability or your obstruction of the voting rights? I'm not, there's no obstruction whatsoever. But there are a lot of people out there who are saying that you're making it so that they're not going to be able to vote in the next election. The, 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 the laws there, the rules are there, and basically the government. The government will stand behind them and make sure they have a right to vote. We have that. The things they're talking about now are in court. Mark Elias has an awful that in court. The courts have struck down, like in Ohio, they struck down the gerrymandering. Things are happening, okay? We act like that we're going to obstruct people from voting. That's not going to happen. Okay, so that was Senator Manchin. Now, you heard that last part there. He's talking about the government will protect you, that kind of thing, you know, that kind of talk. Well, then my first question is, if the government will protect you and if you have these uh, these cases that are going through court, then why are, why did you author this voting rights bill? Because one of the bills, so you have the, the John Lewis bill, and then you also have the, the Freedom uh, Voting Rights Bill, and that's Senator Manchin's bill, okay? They made alter, he had to make some alterations to the bill to try to gain some support from Republicans. It didn't work, but that is, he, he authored the second uh, voting rights bill. So why author the second voting rights bill if you're saying that the government will take care of of the, of the people, and he's saying the government, we don't know if he's talking about state government, he's talking about federal government, it, it wasn't clear there. But when it comes down to it, when we're looking at the situation here, you have to understand exactly what's going on. You have Senator Manchin, who supports both voting rights bills. He supports both of them, but he is not willing to make a change to the filibuster in order for his bill that he authored to get through. And so, it, it, it's really ridiculous because if you create something, you author a bill, and if you really want it to, to pass, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure that that bill passes. So I don't see a problem when we're talking about voting rights to make this carve out so they can go ahead and pass this. So this is, uh, I mean, it, it's we're at a stalemate now. We're at a stalemate. Senator Manchin is not budging. Senator Sinema is not budging. Hopefully later today they will have a vote, so we'll at least see on the record who is is for uh the moving forward and who's not for moving forward but that that's all we have as of right now but i want to know what you guys think so let me know what you guys think about senator mansion let me know what you guys think also about the top stories that we talked about and if you have any questions let me know down below if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe for more and i'll talk to you in the next one bye